Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the distinction between discrete and continuous sinusoid signals in terms of the values of the frequencies. So, we are going to look at distinction between discrete and continuous sinusoids. continuous sinusoids that is for discrete sinusoids let us define the discrete sinusoid x of n as a times cos of cos of omega naught n plus phase phi so given this discrete sinusoid and the value of omega naught that is the frequency belongs to the interval 0 comma 2 pi or minus pi comma pi now consider a signal x1 of n that is a sequence x1 of n defined as a times cos of omega 1 n plus phi and consider a second sequence x2 of n equal to a times cos of omega 2 n plus phi that is two sequences with same phase then if omega 2 is equal to omega 1 plus a multiple of 2 pi that is 2 pi m then x2 of n is equal to x1 of m that is the two sequences are basically same this theorem basically claims that for values of omega that are between minus pi and plus pi and the values of omega that are between say pi and 2 pi then the value of the signal at omega is exactly same as the value of the signal at omega plus 2 pi that is value here and the value here is exactly x of n that is value value of x of n at omega and omega plus 2 pi omega plus 4 pi and so on is basically same we can easily prove this theorem as follows that is x2 of n is equal to a times cos of omega 2 n plus pi but omega 2 is equal to omega 1 plus 2 pi m so by using that by using that relation we have omega 1 plus 2 pi m multiplied by n plus pi so this is equal to a cos omega 1 n plus pi plus 2 pi m into n which is basically a multiple of 2 pi that means it is a period of the cosine function and therefore this should be equal to a cos omega 1 n plus pi which is x1 of n in other words the omega the frequency is replaced by another frequency which is basically omega 1 plus 2 pi m the value of the function or the value of the sinusoid does not change note that this is true only for discrete sinusoids that is for continuous signals given a signal x1 of t is equal to a times cos of a times cos of omega t plus pi and then we define another signal x2 of t equal to a times cos of omega plus 2 pi m multiplied by t plus pi that is we replace omega with omega plus 2 pi m that is a multiple of 2 pi which can also be written as a times cos of omega 2 into t plus pi clearly x1 of t is not equal to x2 of t here the signal x2 of t is not equal to x1 of t because 2 pi m into small t that is time need not be a multiple of 2 pi because t need not be an integer 
here the signal x2 of t is not equal to x1 of t because the product 2 pi m into small t may not be a integer multi an integer multiple of 2 pi because t is a real number that is when you look at the values of omega on the real line it is from for a value of omega between minus pi and plus pi then the value of omega between pi and 2 pi that is say something like omega plus 2 pi the signal value here and the signal value here are different that is x1 of t and this is x2 of the values of the signal at this frequency and this frequency are different thus to summarize for discrete sinusoids when you replace the frequency with a new frequency that is just the old frequency plus a multiple of 2 pi then the value of the signal does not change however for continuous sinusoids when you replace the frequency with a the same frequency added by 2 pi m then the signal is different that is the frequency changes thanks for watching